announced earlier today. 16 were at the, uh, the evaluation, so congratulations to all 16 of those players, and hats off to those that made it. More on that as we move along. This player didn't get an invite, but some think he should have, and look at that play here. He just made it, he scores! Sunder was the one who made the play, Crooks ends up finishing it off, but Kevin Sunder may be a little disappointed he didn't get a World Junior invite. Sure put on a show on that goal. Mark Hapshai told Kevin Sunder when he didn't get this invite, he said you can be two things. You can be bitter or you can be better. What a nice job. If you allow Sunder to skate in the offensive zone, he's going to burn you every time. Look at that puck protection. Now just go to the net, Jamie Crooks. There. Wow. Jamie Crooks is coming off a three-goal hat trick. He almost scored in the first shift about ten seconds into the game. Unbelievable how passive this Edmonton team is right now in this game. And so far they've paid for it. They're trailing one nothing. Welcome back to Rexall Place with the Victoria Royals hold a one nothing lead over the Edmonton Oil Kings. I'm now joined by head coach of the Royals, Mark Hampshire. Mark, your thoughts on the uh, early start to this match? Well, I thought we had pretty good jumps when we got in on the fourth check. We tried to play in their end a little bit. Uh, neutral zone with a few too many turnovers, but so far so good. So talk about entering a year when you guys started with a, a very young defensive core, but what is the progress that you've noticed from them and, and what's been an up and down year so far? Well, I think it's good. We've got a young group up front and in the back, and I, I like our group. You know, we're progressing good, and we've made a commitment to youth to try to build this thing the right way, and, you know, we're just uh, working our way through it. Coach, thanks so much for doing this. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. We'll have to give chase on the other number 18, but St. Paul pulls away from him. He puts on the brakes. That's a nice pass to Ruck. His shot scores! Dylan Ruck and a beautiful pass by St. Paul makes it 1-1. Talk about St. Croix and that line of Ruck and Maxwell. Maxwell just earlier turned that puck over so lethargically at the blue line. But this is what they're able to do when that threesome has control of the puck in the offensive zone. They stretch your coverage, they move you around, and they will get pucks on the net. Look at his head up. Where is he going with it? Throws the brakes on. That's a neat little give and go. Michael St. Croix is so underrated, in my opinion, in terms of what he's able to do with the... There is part of their championship team. Puck brought in, here's Carroll going in, he scores! Carroll beats Brossois. Rachel, who we're just talking about, fed him the pass, and Carroll did the rest. Austin Carroll, only his third of the year, he's 17 years old, and he gives Victoria a 2-1 lead. He was originally on the line with Sunder and Robin Sudek. He's been moved off that line, but he's a big guy, and again, look at how easy he makes that play. And you talk about a good, quick release. That is all Austin Carroll needed on this play here. Coming in from that spot, that's top shelf, man. That might have been a place where Brossois lost the net a little bit. He managed to come home for, for 11 in a row, so they've, they've been... Uh... They've been playing and scoring so well and not trailing. That's what, well, they're not anymore. That shot from the line by Grenick was all the way through. It's a 2-2 two -two tie. It's a face-off win, and one thing I have noticed, they have won face-offs tonight, Edmonton. They've been really good in the face-off circle. Martin Gurnett, who started off so well this year, has kind of cooled a little bit, but will you give him that much room and that much screen? I don't know if Kells touches that on the way or not. Gurnett doesn't care. Says, Wait a minute, we're back tied in this hockey game. Well, I think both goalies want to set a little bit after this period. But we'll see. Well, sometimes the third can play, maybe filtered right back to your goaltender. He kind of maybe a little bit half asleep as well. There's a shot score! Ruck scores the goal, and another opportunity goes in the net. And I, I say it's going to open up. I mean, we do have five goals. I, I'm fully aware of that. On five scoring chances, Ruck puts that one in. That's his second of the night, his 12th of the year. Uh, this, this is at least getting the puck into the high slot area. There's a lot of hacking and whacking at this thing. I think you're going to count one, two, three, four, probably four white-shirted Victoria plays, players in the area. There they all are. Just keep hacking and whacking at that puck. And the hardest whack and the latest whack was there. Well, it's Rock. So it gets ended to the 3-2 lead.
And back the other way, Crooks makes that save against the Royals. Their seventh shot goal for Schwarz bump. There'll be a penalty. He's in his trapezoid. He's bumped. Wasn't a big bump. There was contact and leads to a fight behind the play. It's Lowe fighting there with uh, Jones. Zane Jones and Keegan Lowe. Lowe standing up for his goalie, although it's such a casual bump. I'm not sure he just had, had to do much standing up there. But you can see how the players in the benches are reacting, watching their teammates, their respective teammates scrapping out there. And there's Jones for Edmonton Zane. Jones, first-year player, taking on Keegan Lowe in his third year. There's the bump right there, and Lowe goes down, and the arm goes up. Hey, that's a challenge right there. Get up, get up. you got to deal with me now. Jones does get up. Away they go. Last year was old, but the Alberta Junior Hockey League was Jones. Nice numbers. 21 goals in the AJHL. 97 penalty minutes. It was hardly Milan Lucic on Ryan Miller. No, that's right. That's right. It was. It was like I mean a soft. Well, I mean. Be I... dark competitive as uh, Corbett takes a shot from the blue line. Will go tries to gobble it up. Corbett will get another opportunity. Corbett moving in with room. Shoot. Scores. Might have deflected on the way. Will go was standing in front. Edmonton with two power play goals now. Have a four-two lead. Corbett has more time than you can absolutely find time to do something with. Watch this. Look at the time he's got. Look at the room. Look at the space. It's the C's party. <laughs> Plain and simple. I mean, he's got to be thinking to himself, what am I going to do? Do I shoot it or do I move in? He shot the puck. I don't know if it was deflected on the way, but you're not going to get a hold. It's a long journey from deep in that corner in the second period to your bench, and he ran into his own player when he got to the bench. Talk about insult to injury. Literally, Forsythe catches his breath as he takes a seat at the Victoria bench. Meantime, here comes Hodges, cutting in, shot, scores! He got through Grossois. Hodges makes it a one little game. He went five ball. Grossois won't like that one. Hodges loves it. It's 4-3 now for Edmonton. This is just one of those few times there's a huge burst of speed. And Steve Hodges is able to do that. We saw Austin Carroll earlier go down left wing and get one of the uh, Victoria goals. It seems that if you can kind of wall back a little bit and also break like this, get in behind the defense, there's a shot right through the five hole. I believe it's probably one of the swap which want back. But Steve Hodges, 17 year old from Delta, 12 goals this season. He's doubled his opportunity. Big pressure here now by St. Paul in the top line. Back to Corbett. Shot blocked. Corbett gets it back again. Corbett in front. C score! St. Paul! You could feel it coming. Big pressure by Edmonton paying off with just 15 seconds to go in the second period. They restore their two-goal lead. Just earlier on this same sequence, it took one heck of a defensive play by Victoria to keep Maxwell from scoring. And then again, the line is so good. I talked about they read the landscape so well, and they change positions to get to the spot. Look at that. Look at Ruck pull over to the left. You got Maxwell to the right, the right side of the net over there.